Welcome to an EDB special report on launches between January and July of 1968. During this period, the EDB sought to launch probes on flyby missions to Mars and Venus. The first four launches were for the Mars transfer window, but these four probes will arrive after the Venus probes will. The launches were conducted with the cheapest launch first, and this particular launch was Proby McProbe Face on Peter the Rocket from designer physics students. Peter the Rocket has an interesting staging sequence in that it lights the vernier thrusters on the second stage first by separating off two of the panels right there, as you can see, to make a gap for those, and then ignites the main engine and separates the first stage. And as you can see, that staging was successful. The staging of the fairings on this rocket was, however, less successful due to some tweaking of the parameters of the fairings. As you can see, one of the fairings got caught on the probe there, and we will see the fate of that later on. In total, there are four launches for Mars and five launches for Venus, and here we are awaiting separation of the second stage and ignition of the third stage. Perhaps the fairing may complicate things. We have ignition of the RD-58 third stage and the fairing eventually slips off safely, thankfully. And the rocket continues. The RD-58 of course can reignite, it has four ignitions and it will use one of those ignitions to begin the transfer to Mars. It should be noted that most of the missions were over-designed in terms of Delta V, and as a result, uh, some of them will end up making orbit around Mars and Venus, rather than simply flying by. That is assuming successful launches, and we will see that occur in the next reporting period for the EDB, and not in this video. There we have the end of the third stage and awaiting separation and ignition of the Astra stage, which will complete the transfer. And it will do so successfully, but we will leave this probe for now and return to it when it reaches Mars SOI. The next probe was designed by Shearstrut Industries, the manufacturing arm of the EDB, and launched on the TELUS rocket from Satellites R Us. The TELUS rocket is capable of launching a much heavier payload than this one, so there is plenty of spare Delta V in the launcher itself on this mission. And that is perhaps wise redundancy given the fact that each of these launches has relatively few engines and the failure of an engine would represent the failure of that stage entirely. But on this rocket, the first stage performed exactly as according to plan and separation occurred nominally, and the second stage ignition was good. By and large, the engines used in all these launchers are either from the N1, that is, they are of the NK series, the NK15, NK15V, and NK9V, or they come from the Proton. And we have fairing separation. For this launcher, I believe the first stage had two Proton first stage engines, and this looks to be an NK-9V and we have orbit an older version of this particular launch script being used given that spelling still and then the Shrek 1 system begins its own transfer using the S5.98 engine I believe from the frigate upper stage used in Soviet and Russian rockets and that Trans-Mars injection was a success, given a little bit of tweaking, and this probe too was on its way to Mars. Next up was the Andromeda probe on the Hera rocket, both from Cool Industries rockets designed by Coolany14. And this was the only mission that was actually tight in its Delta Vs, and so it will only do a flyby and not attempt to get into orbit. It uses the launch program by Nadav FR, and in this case that caused a bit of a problem here. As you can see, a possibly a launch clamp knock, possibly some other odd deviation as it attempts to roll. But it managed to save itself and continued right on here passing through Max-Q. And 
everything seems to be all right. And here we have booster separation. And boosters indeed have been jettisoned. And then we will have first stage jettison and second stage ignition. And that went all right as well. Since we have been using the Proton engines and the N1 engines, the NK-15, NK-15V, and NK-9V, quite a lot, we've been getting quite a lot of data points, and they have been progressively getting more reliable. Early on we were doing three stages to orbit, or even three stages plus boosters, and now we're doing two, and that's because of improved efficiency, and also a push to make these particular rockets cheaper. Hopefully that will serve us well in future missions, as this one also reaches orbit. And then of course, Trans-Mars Injection. So far on this interplanetary sequence, we've had three launches without any problems. And that brings us to a total of five consecutive launches without any problems, including the two lunar launches, which actually worked, even though the lunar mission was a little bit iffy. But anyway, this is on its way to Mars as well. And so we will leave the Andromeda mission for now and turn to the Ruby 1 mission on the Prune 1 rocket, both by Tangra Aerospace, designed by Nikko Gagazov. This is another two stage rocket, and the launch script is the one by Nadav FR. It may seem odd to pelt Mars with a whole bunch of missions that are aiming to fulfill the same contract, even though they're a little bit different in their scientific instrumentation. However, this was a very good transfer window, and one that required a very minimal amount of Delta V, and so it was good to take advantage of it and also test these new rockets uh, on this particular mission. And here we go for the second stage. In this case, the second stage is an RD-0110, the upper stage of a Soyuz rocket. The EDB has taken some steps to try and get the US engines competitive with the Soviet engines in terms of pricing, but we've got a long way to go on that. We do hope to see more of a mix of engines in the future. But here again, this probe is igniting for its transfer to Mars, once again with an asterisk engine, and it completes that transfer burn. And so it too is on its way to Mars? Well, not quite. It's a little bit off. As uh, we get these later launches, they're a little bit further out from the ideal launch window. And here we see it is a little bit off. And we need to adjust by about 200 meters per second. But it is on its way and we'll aim to fulfill the contract. So that's four Mars launches taken care of, and now we turn to the Venus launches on that launch window. And the first is, once again, Proby McProbe Face on Peter the Rocket by Physics Student. There will be five Venus launches, and the first four will be identical, basically, to the Mars launches. The requirements to do a flyby to Venus are broadly similar to those to do a flyby at Mars. And so no adaptations were necessary. Obviously, if you've got enough solar panels to handle Mars, you definitely have enough to handle Venus. And so we have first stage out, and verniers, and second stage ignition. And all is well. But if you remember from the previous launch, we had a problem with the fairing, and that has not been fixed. Fortunately, it turned out alright last time. And this time it came free a little bit earlier than last time and did not destroy anything, so still good. And here we are, second stage separation, and this rocket actually does use its third stage for a bit of the orbital burn, as it does here. But it does make double use of this engine by relighting it for the transfer burn as well, so that's fortunate. And here we are, approaching orbit. And getting ready for a shutdown of this stage. And there we go, fifth straight mission during this reporting period to make orbit successfully, and seventh in a row altogether. Here we go for the transfer burn, this time to Venus. Igniting over Hawaii there. And of course, this stage only provides part of the transfer burn. 
and only about half of it and then the next stage the asterisk stage will provide the other half and so here we are as this runs out and getting ready for asterisk ignition separation and ignition all is well and the probe continues and here it is wrapping up its burn and you can see that there is ample delta V to make orbit around Venus after this and so there we have it the next launch is the Shrek 2 mission on the TELUS rocket the Shrek 2 by Shearstrut Industries the manufacturing arm of the EDB and the TELUS rocket from Satellites Are Us designed by Satellite 999 again this powerful rocket can carry far more than this particular mission to orbit and yet it was relatively cheap and so it is going second in the queue and there we have staging and second stage ignition is good as a wider rocket overall it will also be able to accommodate wider payloads and fairing separation and there is the probe relatively small looking on the top of this base. This particular probe was designed to be small and only to carry a goo container to the target location and so the first Shrek was sending a goo container to Mars and this one sending one to Venus. The TELUS rocket uses the script by Nadav FR as modified by Satellite 999. And we have probe separation and now the S5.98M engine makes the burn for Venus. It has the benefit of having remarkable amounts of Delta V because of a long potential burn time. We are not maxing out its burn time on this probe. And also it has high efficiency and is fairly light. So it's a very good combination. And that's it for that burn. And so that probe is on its way and we turn to the Andromeda mission on the Hera rocket, both from Cool Industries rockets. Once again, um, we have the same launch script and we still have the same, well, it doesn't seem like it knocked the launch clamp to cause the initial deviation. But once again, we had a similar problem and a similar result in that the rockets recovered itself and continued on its way. So no harm done, but hopefully in the future that can be corrected. Here we have the boosters going out and somewhat of a delay for separation here. Unusual, but there we are. And the rocket continues. First stage separation and second stage ignition. And so for the seventh launch of 1968, we are doing well. The fairings were separated a little bit late, and here we are making orbit. And orbit has been achieved, and so we can plan for a transfer to Venus. Now, unfortunately, the RCS on the transfer stage did not operate, and so we needed to use the probe's own fuel to turn the rocket so that it could make the transfer burn and this was true of the Mars mission as well. Because there was only a short amount of time between the Mars window and the Venus window, we had to build the rockets ahead of time to make sure that they were ready. And so that is why we couldn't make uh, major adjustments to the rockets in between the two. Oh, so I think we just forgot. And here the Andromeda probe is on its way to Venus. And so we will leave it for a few months and now turn to the Pearl-1 probe on the Perun-1 rocket. These from Tangra Aerospace. This is essentially the same as the Ruby-1 mission to Mars, but the naming convention for Tangra Aerospace is to base it on the destination location and so Ruby for Mars Pearl presumably for Venus. And here the rocket continues through the speed of sound and maximum dynamic pressure. And here the second stage, everything operated as planned. 
Uh, stage separation couldn't be shown because of sound issues. And making orbit. And so that is 10 consecutive successful launches to orbit, 8 during this reporting period, and the probe makes its transfer to Venus. Interesting to note that the probes that were launched earlier to Venus will generally get there later, and the ones that were launched last will actually get there first. Interesting how that works out. But anyway, this launch was successful, and the transfer was successful, and we now turn to the Emerald mission on the Iceberg rocket from SWB Aerospace, a new entry, a new contractor for the EDB. The designer of both the rocket and the probe was Stalin was Balin. And this is the last launch of this period, the fifth launch for Venus, and the ninth launch overall so far as it passes through the speed of sound and through maximum dynamic pressure. Here we go for first stage separation. And there it is, and second stage ignition. Everything is looking good for this launch so far as it continues on its way to Venus. Bearing separation is clear. RD0210 engine continuing its burn. And this is actually a three stage rocket to orbit, and so it completes its burn here. And we have ignition of the third stage. And as it turns out, this rocket too was successful on its very first launch. No engines failed, and so we have our ninth successful launch of this period, and 11th consecutive overall. And... There we have it. And so, on to Venus. Here again, the probe was required to do the turn with its own RCS. There was no actual RCS on either the third stage or the transfer stage, and it was decided to carry the third stage along to provide some extra delta V it had left over since it could reignite. And so that's the end of the third stage, separation, and ignition of the Asterisk engine to transfer to Venus. The Asterisk stage could have handled the transfer on its own, but thanks to the boost it got from the third stage, it now has some in reserve to potentially help with making orbit around Venus. So, with that, we have four probes on their way to Mars, five on their way to Venus, and in the next reporting period, we hope to bring you the results of those missions. And so, thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed this special report from the Elegant Design Bureau, and we hope you will join us next time.